Day and night, F-A-18s and other planes are watched closely in the Air Traffic Control Center, a miniature version of what exists at any major airport. The F-A-18 central roll on the carrier is clear from the top of the tower to deep into its belly. This is one of the ship's 40-plus weapons magazines, where crews prepare the F-A-18's various weapons loads. The F-A-18 can be configured to carry over two dozen different bombs and missiles. Once the F-A-18's bombs are assembled, they ride a series of elevators to the flight deck. Although the bomb is not yet armed, it does contain almost 1,000 pounds of explosives. The last step is to add the fuse. The final arming of the bomb takes place only after the plane takes off. From inside the F-A-18 cockpit, pilots throw a switch, activating them. Dumb bombs are just a small part of the F-A-18 strike-ready arsenal. For precise ground support, they include the latest laser and GPS-guided weapons. Everything we're doing in country is, is precision-guided munitions. In other words, uh, a laser-guided bomb or a bomb that goes to precision coordinates on the ground. One of the F-A-18's most lethal air-to-ground weapons is the JSAW. A large precision strike weapon, the JSAW affixes to the F-A-18's middle wing weapon station. Once launched, it releases two wing structures that allow the missile to glide toward its target. Skimming just a few feet above the ground, the JSAW releases powerful cluster bombs that can destroy multiple targets in one strike. Equally lethal, but with different capabilities, is the HARM, or high-speed anti-radiation missile. Accurately hitting targets from well beyond visual ranges, HARM destroys enemy radar before the F-A-18 can even be detected. The F-A-18 can also be equipped with Maverick, SLAM, and Shrike missiles, as well as a host of guided and unguided bombs. highlight of air-to-ground weapons training is when F-A-18 pilots learn what it's like to drop real live ordnance. Flying missions over remote testing areas, pilots take full control of the F-A-18's precision strike capabilities, pinpointing designated targets and releasing fully armed bombs. Known as Live Day, this is when new Navy pilots experience for the first time the destructive air-to-ground capabilities of the F-A-18. What makes the F-A-18's weapons so lethal is the latest in targeting technology. Carrier-based Hornet squadrons increasingly employ deadly accurate infrared systems. This is a forward-looking infrared pod that the Navy F-18 carries. And what we do with that thing is, is, is now we are able to look via that sensor onto the ground to a specific target point, find a building, maybe even an urban environment. Now I can turn on some laser energy withheld in that pod, de laser designate that target, and now my laser-guided bomb goes to that laser energy. And now I get a probability of impact within about 13 feet. F-A-18s also track targets using highly advanced radar technology housed in the nose of the plane. These unique systems allow the pilot to switch between air-to-air -air and air-to-ground modes with the push of a button. Integrated into an electronic network, the F-A-18 takes on a central role in frontline operations. Through satellite data link, the radar, map, and weapons displays of the F-A-18 cockpit can be seen by fellow air crew, as well as commanding officers in the carrier strike group. The frontline F-A-18 
becomes the eyes and ears of an integrated battlefield. And with each updated model, the F-A-18 grows more sophisticated. At Lemoore, the latest class has spent nine months preparing for battle. As they set out for the fleet, the most recent graduates take control of the next generation of F-A-18, the Super Hornet. The Super Hornet design is based on the original F-A-18, but it is an even more lethal machine. The Super Hornet is almost three feet longer and has a 25% larger wing surface than the A through D models. Its structural differences include diamond-shaped intakes and a dog-tooth wing design. The bigger, stronger Super Hornet holds 35% more internal fuel capacity and contains extra space for future technologies. On its longer wings, the Super Hornet can support two additional weapon stations or fuel tanks. Well, of course, the F-18 has smart technology built into almost all of the weapon systems. Almost all of the hardpoint uh, pylons and, and launchers are, uh, are smart technology, so they're capable of carrying the most sophisticated weapons. The airplane actually covers a lot of the functions, allowing the pilot to really concentrate on the, the mission at hand. It's a great aircraft. The lethality is awesome. Bigger, more capable, and with room to grow, the Super Hornet promises to take on an even greater role than the earlier model F-A-18s. Really what we get out of the Super Hornet is the capability to draw from more advanced technologies and then also the stuff that was designed for the Super Hornet backfit it. And, it, and again, it's that complementary thing where the, the A through C and the E and F Super Hornet just complement each other and make our carrier decks a lot more lethal than they had been in the past. The Super Hornet is being modified to fill almost every role on the carrier, from electronic jamming to refueling. The carrier air wing of the future will be made up of a lethal and effective team of F-A-18s. The majority of the missions on the aircraft carrier are going to be accomplished by a Hornet. How important is that to the uh, military? Uh, it allows us a quickly deployable force to be able to handle virtually any scenario. But its heart will always be that of a fighter. And as one of the most lethal weapons aloft, the F-A-18 will be defending the skies for decades into the future.